This is like the craziest thing you'll ever see. What's that? And then all of a sudden I just sort of saw this ghostly figure. It's really eerie. Strange. I don't know what it is. So I feel like I can see something low to the ground in that corner. Hey Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning in to Amy's Crypt. Tonight we are going to be conducting a paranormal investigation inside the Ladies Cottage, which is part of Willow Court Asylum here in Tasmania, Australia. And this is supposedly one of the most active and haunted locations on the site, so stay tuned. Willow Court Asylum was founded in 1827 in Tasmania, Australia. Many people consider it to be one of the most haunted places in the country. The Ladies Cottage is one of the many buildings to make up this site and is claimed to be particularly active with the paranormal. Many spirits, sadly even those of children, are said to remain within this area of the asylum and tonight we will try to make contact with them. This episode was made possible by Tasmania's Most Haunted. Please show them some love and support by following them on the links posted in the video description. You can even investigate Willow Court for yourself by checking out their website. Hi Crypt Keepers, we are currently standing in Willow Court Asylum's Ladies Cottage and I'm joined by a very special guest. This is Charmaine from Tasmania's Most Haunted and you have done a lot of investigating here and you know a lot about this place's history. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell my Crypt Keepers a little bit about this particular building? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the Ladies Cottage was actually built in 1868. Okay, so basically this building was uh, one level and it was for the superior class female patients. Yeah, so the families actually um, helped financially as well to fund this beautiful cottage. And um, so basically they paid to have their loved ones in, in the ladies' cottage. Now, um, initially, as I said, it was one level and around 1903, they actually built another level, which we're standing up on now to house another about 24 beds. So they all had single rooms in here. Uh, they even had their own uh, animals, farm animals here. Oh wow. Yeah, so, um, and here a few years ago, um, the owners actually uh, found around 400 items under the veranda of this cottage. And they were like aprons, bonnets, clothing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they obviously used to do a lot of sewing in here. as um, And that was probably a part of the therapy as well, yeah. you know, to help with the treatment here. So... Yep, been investigating this place since around 2014, wow. this building, so it's beautiful. And this is supposed to be, I, I've heard this is one of the more active places in the asylum. Can you tell me a little bit about the activity you get here? Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so there's a huge range of um, experiences that we've actually had here. Lots of apparitions, voices. Um, we've done quite a few EVPs and captured voices as well. We've had a few scratchings Ooh, as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only a couple. So um, we've actually captured a, a bit of a, um, a footage of what it looks like a spirit actually running out of one of the rooms downstairs and oh. running up the hallway, um, up the stairway. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was pretty cool to capture that. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So you were telling me about an experience that was pretty intense and vivid for you, yourself, mm. that you had here. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? Yeah, definitely. I was just here on my own. It's what I do before every tour. I come here and just sort of spend, you know, maybe a couple of hours, you know, before everyone comes here. And um, I just sort of, you know, communicate with the spirits that are here. I was just sitting on the stairs, downstairs on my own one day. It was daylight and um, I think it was just like, playing with my phone or something and I just ha happened to look up and then all of a sudden I just sort of saw this ghostly figure dressed in like the nurse's uniform back in the era, you know, the period yeah. uniform, uh, like the bib and brace type outfit. Um, just walk into one of the other rooms downstairs, but she didn't have a head, you know, so yeah, it was That's just, odd. that was really weird. <laughs> well, I didn't see a face, you know, um, yeah. it might have just been, it was just that quick, you know, you sort of question yourself, you know, you think, you know, did I really see that? Or, you know, you sort of, 
Yeah, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that is so cool. It You're is. so lucky to see that. Mm. So we potentially have nurses here, yes. women, and even children. Yes. I assume there's a couple of trigger objects there is. around. So have you had any luck using those to communicate? Yeah, definitely. Um, the children are quite active here. So, you know, we have things like Boo Buddy and um, the cat balls. You know, yeah. they love playing with those. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so plenty of those. And we even have like a room that's always been known as Mandy's room. Yeah, yeah. we've just sort of, we've communicated with a little girl here. Um, yeah. We haven't been able to um, find out any information about Mandy, whether she actually resided here or whether she's just, you know, come from somewhere. But it's just, um, yeah, she's a, a little girl um, that always comes out to play. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to tonight. And I know that after seeing this episode, a lot of my viewers are probably going to be interested to come to Willow Court for themselves. How can they go about doing a ghost tour or something here with you? Yeah, definitely. Just head over to our um, Facebook page. Um, so you can basically book directly through there. We also have Instagram um, and uh, we also have a web page. So it's www.tasmaniasmosthaunted.com.au. Awesome, I'll be linking all of that information below guys so that you can check out uh, Tasmania's Most Haunted and this place for yourself. But let's get into exploring and investigating. All right guys, so we are currently standing right at the front of the ladies cottage here at Willow Court Asylum. I'm gonna walk you guys around just because there's a lot to take in with this place and it might help uh, just to follow the paranormal investigation tonight. If you're a little bit more accustomed with the space, so if you kind of look around me, we're in this beautiful grand room and this would have been like a, a formal setting, uh, almost like a, a living room, uh, we can call it. So you've got the grand old fireplace and you've got to remember this was a place for the more well-to-do women who, whose families were actually paying to have them put here in this place. So you'd think obviously they would want to be put into a nice place and looked after a little bit more so than uh, other areas of the asylum. Uh, just in this one, which you can't really go into, this would have been the front dining room. Currently it just has a huge pool table in there. What's that? Big bang. Pool table in there. What's that? Pool table in there. What's that? Pool table in there. What's that? Yeah, I don't think that was in the building though. No. So I'm not too worried. Now I'm also going to make a note that the man who owns this building also is an antiques collector and he sells antiques. So a lot of the things that you're seeing around here, you know, this chair, uh, these creepy mannequins here, they're not original to this building. Uh, they're just kind of being stored here, but it definitely adds in a feel and like atmosphere and ambience to this place, having all of these different items around. And who knows what kind of attachments all of these old antiques could have. And I'm gonna head upstairs, but before I do, I'm gonna point out our first creepy mannequin here in the corner. So she is ready to go all dressed up to head out and lovely but she is very very creepy like in there in that dark corner and when I first came in today she really really scared me <laughs> so I'll meet you upstairs guys Whew, there's a lot of stairs but that staircase is awesome I love it now when you get up the top of the stairs there's just a long hallway and it's just lined with rooms and this would have been where all the ladies were kept I'm gonna take you into this one And we have a friend in this one. Another mannequin. Is this a head? I don't know what that is. It, it's way more creepy than what I thought it was, so let's go. <laughs> so that's just one of the rooms, single room, just to give you an idea of what this place looks like. Uh, this is all just lined with the rooms. There is, actually I'll show you this. This is actually the toilet or would have been the toilet. So are you ready for this? <laughs> He's actually dressed as a convict. This is like 
more or less what they used to make the convicts in Tasmania wear with those arrows. <laughs> so you'll see them all over Tassie. All right, so let's keep going this way. Just don't fall down the stairs. <laughs> so all these rooms, this one here has a little mattress, gym balls and some teddy bears. We are going to come across some trigger objects as we go through the building. These are largely for children because unfortunately there are said to be child spirits here. Always sad, but in a place like this, that's kind of a given. Those times were very, very harsh, especially for kids back then. Oh, this is like the craziest thing you'll ever see. <laughs> so there's a, a bunch of events that go on here in Tasmania known as Dark FOMO and it's kind of like a different art installations, different art events and this is one of them and there's just hundreds of soldiers and horses. Uh, these are all made of plasticine I think like handmade which is pretty intense and crazy because <laughs> there are so many of them but uh, look it up guys this is something that just happens in, in Tassie so We'll probably see a few weird things because of that event here tonight. You can also see this building is deteriorating a bit. The, the roof is kind of, well, broken a bit. <laughs> there's just more rooms. This is like almost a T here. Uh, there's one down here I'll take you to. I just want to take you in here because there are some trigger objects. Obviously, again, for the child, you have some lollies, music, little music boxes. I mean, if that goes off by itself tonight, I'm going to die. <laughs> and this beautiful doll here. There's also more stuff down here. The darker this place gets, the more creepy feeling it has as well. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah. So you have a lovely doll and some kind of letter games. I mean maybe we can play with this and see if any of the little kids want to play with us. But that's more or less a good overview of the ladies cottage here guys. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to investigate. I think that you guys are gonna love it. I'm really hopeful that we capture some really cool paranormal evidence tonight. So make sure you're staying tuned. All right guys, so we've just set up, you can already see one going, a couple of balls here. I thought we'd start our paranormal investigation kind of in a central area, so the middle uh, section of the upstairs hallway area so the middle uh, section of the upstairs hallway uh, I do have a k2 meter there in the middle of the rug but yeah we've just got a couple of these balls that if they are physically moved touched they will light up was that just the building creaking I just a noise then. they will light up they will light up they will light up yeah, I heard a noise. I can't tell if it's the building creaking or not. My name is Amy. I'm here with Sonia and Charmaine. And I would love to talk to anybody that is in this lady's cottage. We're very, very friendly people. We don't mean harm to you. We'd just love to know if there's anyone around to kind of talk. I've uh, put out a few pieces of equipment. I think you may be familiar with them because I know that other people have come here to talk to you before. But if you can touch any of the balls that are on the floor, they light up really pretty colors and that shows us kind of where you are and that you want to talk. I also have a device just at the front of this rug that if you go near that and maybe touch it, you should be able to 
make more lights on it light up, not just the one. So we have a ball going off. Thank you if that's you. Are you able to make a noise somewhere just to show us that you're here? Can you find another one of the balls? It's like a game. Maybe you can find all of them. So this one's going off again. Do you think you can light up another ball if you try really hard? Just a different one to the one that you've already lit up. Oh, thank you. So we have a different ball lighting up. So you found two out of the five balls. We can give you a clue where another one is. It's on the other side of the rug. right in front of the middle door at the back of the hallway. Do you think you can find that one and touch it and light it up? So I keep hearing a noise and it sounds like it's coming from up here. I'm not sure what it is. Oh, thank you. It looks like you found one of the other balls. Well done. That's three. <laughs> Did you put all five out, Mum? Did you put five balls out? Um, I don't know if there's four. I think there's four. Four? Four. You've got oh, one. No, there's five. There's five. There's five. There. Yeah. You got two more balls to find. Can you walk up to that green light, please? Again. Can you touch a different ball? Alright guys, this has been such a cool little intro with some of these balls going off, so we're going night vision now. I've also got a piece of equipment I haven't used. This is called the Polter Tune, and it works pretty much the same vein as the Paranormal Music Box, which you guys have seen before on my channel. Uh, it shoots out an infrared beam straight out the top here, and if anything crosses that, such as a ghost, <laughs> it'll set off a music box. Um, and because we've had this ball kind of near me here going off so much, I'm going to point it. I feel like I just heard a bang. Um, mm. I'm going to point it at that room, at that general direction. And hopefully, I mean, if this goes off at the same time as the ball, how cool would that be? Because this was the ball that was going off earlier, we've put the um, polter tune down on the floor next to it. So if I can demonstrate how it works to you guys. And this is to demonstrate to anybody in in this room, we have the coolest toy 
the coolest toy ever is out here in the hallway. All you need to do is walk past it like this and it will play some music. And what is a bonus is there's a colorful ball just like this one in my hands. It's on the floor right next to that music box. If you touch that, then you've got lights going off. So you've got music and party lights. I don't know if that was a thing that you used to have here at the ladies cottage, but you've got it now. If there's any kids and you want to play, we want to play too. We'd love for some music to start going so that we can do that. Don't be shy to come on over, we're not going to hurt you. So we might move our investigation into one of the back rooms and try to reach out to the, the child spirits that are in there with some of the trigger objects. We're, we're going to leave this music box out here in the hallway. If you are curious about it but you're a little bit scared because we're all kind of standing around you, just know that we're leaving it on. So when we move away from this space, you're still welcome to come and play around with it if there's something that you want to do. Alright, so we've just seen that cat ball go off in the hallway. Oh, it's gone off, oh. but the music oh, thing's not going. The music yeah, the music box is there. And my way of thinking was if there are little kids out there, they might be a little bit intimidated, or I mean, even adults, because we're all standing out there saying, go up to this music box and touch it and touch these balls and do all this stuff. And we're all just standing around there right in front of it waiting. So I thought, it, it is a new piece of equipment for them here. Apparently they haven't really played with it or used it. So hoping they're curious and if we leave it set up out there and we come into this other room, start investigating here, maybe we'll pick things up here. But maybe it's also enough for a spirit to feel confident enough to go out and, you know, oh, they're all gone now. I'm gonna go and play with this, this new device. You know, I'm no ghost psychologist, but hey, <laughs> who knows? Uh, but we've got a few things that we're going to play with in here. Um, I've got a lovely doll just on the chair here next to me. And set up just on her lap is an Opalus. And I've used this a couple of times on my, my channel you guys have probably seen. But basically what that device does is it measures a couple of different environmental factors around it. And it uses those to select words uh, from a database basically. Now I have had words that seem relevant come through on the Ovilus before and I've been told that there has definitely been some relevant responses come through before here in the ladies cottage at Willow Court. So I thought it would be nice to try and communicate with the kids. We've got the doll here, the Ovilus, maybe they'll, they'll be interested in the doll, go try and play with her and maybe that helps them understand how to use the device and maybe select a word. I've also got a K2 in here and I'm going to try and see if I can get that to spike up by playing with the kids. So I think that this is an interesting place to start the investigation, but we are all ears <laughs> for that music box out there. Alright guys, we've just moved into one of the rooms where apparently the, the child spirits are more active. I've got a whole bunch of stuff to play with here, so I mean, even if no spirits or, or kids come to play with me, I'm just going to be sitting here having fun by myself, but if there is someone here and they want to play, like, don't be shy or scared of me because I would really, really like to play with you. So I've got a cat ball here. 
yeah, in front of me. If you you want to come and sit down with me, sit in my little circle with me and my doll, I would love that. Uh, there's that ball there. If you touch that, that that lets me know that you're here with me, and it also lights up really really cool colors. So I've also got this awesome colorful letter chart in front of me, and I've put a couple of words down already. I've written hello Amy. My name is Amy, so now we know each other. Just introducing myself to, to you if you are here. And hey, this, this offer extends not just to children, if there's an adult here <laughs> that wants to hang out and talk with me, that's totally fine too. Now I also have this doll on this chair next to me, and I've set up the Ovilus on her, on her lap, so if you want to play with the doll, Please do come close to her. Maybe you can use the device, the, the black box that she is holding. And maybe you can tell me things like your name or, or a little something about yourself, your favorite color she is holding. I'll start by telling you my favorite color. My favorite color is yellow. And I bet a lot of you didn't know that because you probably assume it's black. <laughs> Can you come and sit with me? Do you want to play with the doll? Maybe you want to play with these letters. That's fine too. I don't know if anyone, oh, I can hear tapping right next to me, really soft tapping. Are you playing with the doll? As soon as I said that, it stopped as well. Can you? I can hear something. That's strange. I don't know what it is. Are you wanting to play with the doll? Is there someone down here? Can you move the doll? tapping right now but that was to I'm not sure if it's so faint that the camera audio may or may not pick it up it might but it's it just sounds like almost tapping like someone is tapping on the chair or the floor I mean I don't think it's the chair may or may not pick it up may or may not pick it up May or may not pick it up. I freak out if I put my head under here as a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it. But... Maybe you can make this green light change colour. 
when, when I move over a letter that's in your name. So, it's tapping again. There's nothing there. When I get close to a letter that's in your name, can you come close and grab this green light? Oh, okay. You want to play? All right, I'm going to move very slowly over these letters. You can change the color, make an extra light light up. That tells me that one of these letters is in your name. All right, is this too hard for you? <laughs> This is a very abstract paranormal experiment. <laughs> Can you make a noise if your name has a P in it? Nah, no one's name has a P in it. All right, another letter. Just so you guys know as well. I cannot see anything. <laughs> um, I can see where the letters are. I can't see any for what they are. Do a vowel. I don't know what these are, Mum. Yeah. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> this is a... What is this? E? E. E. Does your name have an E in it? Make a noise. I could hear that. I could hear that too. Yeah, it was behind me. It's behind you. Okay, so I think we've got a winner. We've got an E. Thank you. Man, I could... I'm just going to go through the whole alphabet. <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm currently just moved rooms. I'm still listening out for that music box. I am very hopeful that it might go off. But I've got a whole bunch of new toys here. So I've got a little car, I've got a bowl, a whistle, I've got some jacks which are around my cat ball. Hopefully that goes off. These are like little music box players. I love these. Uh, Another doll up here, there's a bunch of like lollies that people have bought in and left and you know, a couple of other dolls here, all around. What's that say? Bale. That could have been my body heat going close to the obelisk, but the obelisk is on... Oh, I think I'm just going to splinter up my butt. <laughs> like, no joke. <laughs> Hope you think that's funny. Alright, so I'm going to go lights out. Hi, my name is Amy and I've, I've come here to visit you. I'd love to know if there's anybody in this room. If there's a child, if there's an adult, that would be amazing. If you could, if you could make a noise, you could tap on the wall just like this. Or the floor. That'd be very cool. I did hear a tap, but it sounded like it might have been on the roof or something. I have another ball here, and if you touch it, if you move it, it lights up colours like that. Very pretty colours. It's also got a load of jacks around it, so if that's a toy that you want to play with, then light that all up and let me know.
I'm going to roll the ball over to you. Can you roll the ball back? Probably just my eyes, but I feel like I can see something low to the ground in that corner. of the cells I st again still have that music box on it's uh, just down there to my left but I'm standing at the very tippy top of the staircase and I couldn't resist doing a little investigation on the staircase because it's a beauty it's it looks spooky I'm sure many people have walked up and down its stairs um, ran up and down its stairs even and I'm gonna do a spirit box at the top but i am also got obviously put cat balls like the whole way down uh, I've also got a k2 meter right at the very uh, top as well so we'll see if anything uh, goes off but I would love if someone spoke to me through the spirit box okay so my name is Amy and I just want to call out to anyone that may be in the ladies cottage here at Willow Court uh, maybe you are a lady who spent some time here Maybe you're, you're a child and you just want to talk to somebody. Whatever the case, I would, I would love to talk to you. I'm going to put on a, turn on a device. It is a little bit loud, but it might help you to talk to me. So I'm going to turn it on now and I would love if you could come close to me and try and use it uh, to communicate. So my name is Amy. Is there anyone here who could tell me their name? I'm also calling out to anyone that may be downstairs. Don't be shy to come on up. Walk right on up the middle of the stairs. And hey, if this is too loud and you want to run away and get away from it, the coast is clear, you can run downstairs. Just kick those balls on the way down. Can you tell me how long you've been here? How many years? Was this a nice place to stay? Did you like it here? Are there any children here? I might have been that motorbike. I just thought I could hear, hear someone's voice down there. Um, what's that? Sound like a tap. And then creaking. Yeah, the voice kind of sounded like mm. a groan. Uh, it, maybe it was the tail end of a motorbike going by or something. I couldn't tell because this was on. Um, is there someone down there a bit grumpy that I'm making all this noise? I'm sorry. Why were you sent here to Willow Court? Hmm. Are you coming up the stairs? So that was the cat ball at the very bottom, I believe. Can you come up the stairs, please? Is 
there's somebody down there and you just touched or walked past that ball, if you carry on up the stairs, there's a few more balls and you should kick them on the way up. If there's somebody down there, if there's somebody down there, if there's somebody down there, can you find that same ball again? Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you guys want to do a little bit more reading about the Willow Court Asylum or any of the other haunted locations from around the world I visited, head to my website, amyscrypt.com. You guys can also follow me at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You should definitely also check out Tasmania's Most Haunted. They are on Facebook and Instagram. Go and follow them, guys. Thanks for watching, Crypt Keepers. Until next time.